But as we built this launch week, we wanted to really focus each of these three days on some very specific topics. Day one was all about who is it that we serve? Who is the Excel Center here to serve? The obvious answer is the students. But we're also here to serve our community. The community relies on the University of Akron for as, as an economic engine, as a cultural leader, and as a place that they know that their kids will come and get an education that will give them the capability to do anything they want in the world. All right. And now, I'd like to bring up John Zogby. Everybody give a warm hand to John Zogby. I talk about age cohorts. And an age cohort is what happens when something huge, historically, invades the lives of young people. So now we get to the millennials. 1979, 1997. There is a worldview that they have that is separate and distinct from every other age cohort. And what caused that is one word technology. Develop the kinds of skills that can sell your number one product. And your number one product is not widgets and it's not apps. Your number one product is you. Um, the question is, and Scott, I'd like you to do so for the university and the other three for the area, but the question of the mayor was, what do you think are the greatest selling points of this city today? We have a world-class university, world-class people. It's, it's an easy sales job. I mean, I could do it all day long. Without a doubt, it's, it's the people in this room because you're going to make the difference. And you know what? It's Akron's got talent. Well, I think the connectedness to the city is actually one of its greatest strengths. I mean, having been the new guy in town, it's, I remember the first impression that I had is, wow, this is kind of like the all-American city. And then, I, then I drive downtown and I see the sign that says, all-America city. I think the city just has so much to say without even talking about all the strengths of the university itself when you get inside the university. But, but again, well, I think you guys have covered a lot. I mean, and I, I agree with Marilyn about the people. I mean, our people are, uh, it, it's, it's a phenomenal asset. What do you need from the private sector? The audience wants to know, what do you need them to do and how can they help you? What do you want? What I would say from the private sector, just tell me what you want. We may not be able to do everything, but you have to tell me what you want, and you have to have a little bit of patience. Well, I mean, they don't entirely feel welcome yet. They feel like, if I'm young and experienced and have proven nothing yet, but my idea might actually be a good one. How do I get to you? How do I communicate to you? Invite me to the table. It doesn't have to be at my table. You have to invite me to yours, period. Uh, if I don't know, I don't know. But if you call, we'll be there. And I, I think, I love that you said, uh, invite me to the table. Invite us. I'd like you to talk just generally about millennials and about, in your administration, how the voice of students is heard. It's heard. What I like about this generation is that they do feel more emboldened to be persistent in trying to be heard. I mean, there is a higher level of student activism on campuses that really hasn't been seen since the 1960s. on work that we've been doing in the Black Hills of South Dakota. So Olivia's research project has been doing some microbiology. We are an environmental microbiology lab, and we have been studying uh, microbial interactions and processes in Wind Cave National Park. And we have been working on lakes. And so if you, the natural entrance is right here. There's an elevator right here, and you work your way down through the cave to this lakes area here. And the reason we've been working on these lakes is these lakes are currently threatened by development. Uh, my name is Becky Erickson and I work with uh, Matt Lee and we also have some students here that have um, been working with us, um, Brendan, Brendan Miller and Molly Herzog. And I just want to tell you a little bit about our upcoming um, project that we're just launching later this semester and then into 2016 and 2017 and hopefully beyond. Um, it's entitled Right Message, Right Messengers, uh, the Currency of Compassion. Yeah. Normally, typically what we would do is interact with a couple students on these kinds of projects, involve a couple of graduate students, um, and that would be it. But we're really able to expand what we're doing and integrate what we're doing um, more directly into our classroom experiences and 
what Peter and Bill will talk about, unclass kinds of experiences. So Hi, I'm Molly Hartzell. I'm a first year master's student here in the sociology department. Um, the project that I've been working on has been looking at a local organization who provides counseling services and things like that to local residents. Part of what I think is kind of cool about this project is that you're actually able to um, uh, really, it's almost like this weird, interesting, unique type of uh, social movement. If we're going to go in and be able to find out from this organization how to make them better and make them more compassionate and let that grow. So really, is this uh, instead of just thinking of the social movement as this, as this motion of going out in a giant mass of people and, um, and like advocating and demanding something, here's another form and ad a way of advocacy within an organization to do so. so. First, let me thank Ian and Jeff and Carolyn and the XL Center uh, for reaching out to faculty from before the XL Center was actually created and working with faculty uh, to help us do what we want to do and uh, do what we are already doing in some cases and do it better. But we really appreciate it. Entrepreneurship is about, it, about understanding that it's my responsibility to figure out how I will be useful to other humans. Now, I'm 55 years old, and that idea scares me. But I think my millennial students already get it, right? They're, if I tell them that idea, they're like, yeah, I already lived that life. So let me step, take a step back and set the context for this unclass thing, which is really about creating teams that are driven by energy, passion, creativity, that embraces the main threads of the Excel Center, which is entrepreneurship, uh, creativity, uh, community engagement, experiential learning, all those things. Those are happening lots of places on campus. We want to do more of it in different ways. That's what, that's what this is about. We're together. It's a team. We've got lots of different tools we're bringing to the, to the show, and we got a new plan. So in a way, it's more than, it's more than metaphor. It's actually the sorts of ideas that we, uh, a small number of faculty, uh, Carolyn, Bill, and others that you've already met, um, started talking about of the Excel Center and what we could do that would be different and complementary to the things that are already being done.